G'day guys, welcome to today's Aussie Adventure. Today is diesel install, diesel heater installed into the caravan. It's sitting behind me in the box here. Um, I haven't pulled it out yet, I've just popped the top. Um, it's a 1 to 5 kilowatt adjustable um, diesel heater. We ordered it through, I think it's called Aussie Outback Camping or something, or Aussie Outback Supplies or something like that. Uh, I think it was about 270 bucks or something. Well, it might even be $250, I can't remember. Um, but anyways, let's have a look and see um, what's in here. Um, like I said, I haven't opened anything except for the lid. Okay, but lots of things, that's the um, the fuel tank. So we'll just lay that here to the side. Actually, I might as well pull it out, out, out of the plastic. Um, don't ask me what's in there. Some screws, some screws of some description. It's like one of them, them kids' games used to play, trying to get the um. Uh, oh, anyways, what are they? Oh, hey, whoop. hey, there we go. Okay, so inside the um the fuel tank, oh, obviously that's the the feeder. That the fuel line goes on to uh, a couple of rubber grommets a couple of um of um, tech screws those tech screws though will be absolutely useless on external usage you really need to have galvanized ones if you're gonna um, use or stainless steel but stainless steel screws cost cost a fortune but they're useless so i will not be using those outside they will rust um so that's a fuel tank what else let's have a look Okay, there's a mounting plate. I have watched videos on guys installing these things. Um, I think the fuel line goes there. I think that's the um, air intake, and I think I think that one there's the exhaust system. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, look out! Instructions. Oh, I hate instructions. Uh, and stuff that. Absolutely has no relevance to me. Uh, you've got air pumps and things, turbo chart. Look, I don't need it. What's that? Chuck that away. That's gone. Right. What have we got here? Air heater. 2.0, 5.0, 8.0. Manual. Hmm, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, just normal instructions. So I'll, I'll take a look at them later. We'll put them there for the time being. What else have we got? Ah. It looks like an exhaust system to me. What sort of, what sort of, oh, and they've done the same thing. They keep, they give you these, these gold anodized things or whatever they are, and they're crap. No good for external use. You really need to use um, galvanized or, or stainless steel. Um, good thing being a tradesman, being a carpenter by trade, or well, I'm retired now because of my illnesses, um, but I've got tons and tons and tons of galvanized tech screws, so I'll be right there. I don't need to buy them. Okay, let's see what else is in here. It all seems to be packed pretty well. Oh, that phone can come in handy too. That, yeah, I'll keep that phone. That can come in handy. Oh, what's this? Oh, hold on a minute. Oh, what's, the actual, what's the actual heater unit? Hold on a second. I'll just put this camera on a tripod. On, it, on its tripod here. Let's just move that out of the road. We will pull this out gently. It's wrapped really well. Um, something I prepared earlier. A knife. Oh, I've got a pink one. There you go. They do say they come in different colours. You don't get a choice. Um, the way it's boxed, obviously, that's the way it's boxed. Um, straight out of the um, out of the factory. And it's got three mounting screws. I've just seen another screw fall through the back there. Um, so that's actually already screwed. Look at that. It's got like a rubber seal as well. Definitely going to have to look at the manual for this one. But that screw's come out of there. Obviously, they haven't put them in all the way. Um, yeah, they're a bit loose. I don't know if you can see that or not. I hope you can. They're a bit loose. Anyways, I will put that in there straight away. I would. Okay, so you've got a short thread and you've got a long thread. The short thread, looking at that's the long thread. 
So that's fallen out. So we'll put that in there straight away so I don't lose it. You know what it's like when you when you got screws and things. You just yes, you you lose them quite easily. Um, yeah, geez, that goes in quite a, quite a ways. Oh yeah, so let's have a look. Let's have a look, little look at the cedar diesel fuel heater XMZ-2, 12 volt, 40 watt. Heating power 5 kilowatt. Okay, it's meant to be plug and play. Um, so that's interesting. Um, it's got the one cord on it there, but just taking a look at that's the fuel intake. Just taking a look at this, there must be there's another box here, we'll open it up. I'll leave that on there so no crap gets in there. Leave it there for the, for the moment, but yeah, pink one. Look at that, nice, beautiful. Right, what's next? One more box here. I'll just place it there for a second. Get rid of this big box. I'm just going to keep that foam. That foam is actually quite handy to come in to, to pack things in tightly to boxes and things there. It'll come in handy. Right, another box. Let's open it up with what I prepared earlier the night. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, you should be able to. I hope so. You only get one chance at these things, don't you? Right, what's in here? So far, it's not too much stuff, so it's looking... Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in here. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So that's a... Um, that's a fuel line that you can put from what I gather and what I've read, that's a fuel fuel line that you can stick into uh, an existing jerry can. In other words, what you could do is um, see where I've got my jerry can holder there. They reckon that's for water only, but look, you know my truck's diesel. Everything's diesel. Um, I can put a um, I can put this into a jerry can and have it sit there and yeah. And, and feed the fuel line straight there. I don't think I'll do that though. I think what I'll do is I'll mount that um, this fuel tank on the back of that. So um, and then have then I can have the Jerry tin at the front. Um, all right. What else do we have in here? We have a fuel line. Feels like a rubbery, silicony type stuff. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how long that is. Luckily, our caravan is a short caravan. Oh, there's lots of nuts and bolts and hose clamps and geez they even give you zip ties oh, that's all right very interesting that's that oh there's a, a fuel filter there yeah that looks looks all right i wonder if it's got a directional thing on it i'm sure the instructions will tell me when i have a look but um so that's that this is going to be the the vent this will be the, the vent that blows hot air in this is the air intake from inside the van that's that it's got two directional um flues i suppose you'd call them oh, i don't know what they're called but yeah so directional so that's good so one intake i'd say and one goes on the as your outtake so that's interesting actually it's got a t-piece you can have ah there you go it's got a t-piece you can actually have two outs i think i'll just have the one out though i don't that doesn't oh yeah no it stretches it does stretch because that's actually quite important to to know because of your measurements of what you make. Ah, that's your um, that is the air intake filter. This was the bit I was interested in. This is the um, the diesel fuel pump. Now I've uh, so it's, yeah, so it plugs plugs little plug there. There's a heap of cords here. Looks like it's. Pretty much plug and play they've left the positive um they haven't done anything with the positive 
obviously because I'm going to have to um, find a connection, I suppose, that'll go into the shunt is what I'm what I'm assuming. Um, so that's that. Now, am I missing anything? So, so we've got that, that. We've got, okay, that's your um, air intake hose. And there's your exhaust. Okay, now this is supposed to have, this is supposed to have a, um, this is supposed to have a remote control with it. Now, what am I missing? Aha, uh -huh, here we go, hold on a minute. Yeah, I'll see. Good thing I didn't chuck that in the bin. <laughs> There's the remote and the actual control unit. So, um, yeah, this is a little little remote controller. Uh, how that works, I don't know. We'll figure that out. But um, yeah, there's a little um, little control unit there. Um, have to figure out, see how long these wires and things are, and makes do some measurements, take some measurements and things. And but yeah, geez, that got me a bit worried then. I thought, this hang on, this is meant to have. Where's the control unit? So that's basically what's in the box, guys. And a little bit of everything. Uh, that's that bit of rubber there. I'm assuming is for the fuel pump. And uh, these fuel pumps are notoriously meant to be noisy. Um, there is ways I've seen guys do things that make them not so noisy. Um, and I'll give it a give it a crack. Um, I think one of the one of the big problems is even though this is rubber, and you can surround this, the rubber um, you've still got a metal screw that's going to go into your chassis somewhere. And those vibrations are still going to go through the screw, I think, and still into the metal, even though it's rubber. Uh, unless, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. We'll, you know, we'll run all those tests. But um, so that's what's in the box. Right. The next thing I'm going to have to do is measure twice, cut once, and I've got to figure out um, where I'm going to put this thing. If you've watched our we bought a band video, I've got an idea of where I want to put it, but I'm going to have to jump underneath the underneath the underneath the van and just make all my measurements and see how far some of these things will stretch um, and yeah then we'll take it from there so with this um, this diesel heater install being such a small van it's very very tight underneath so after a lot of deliber deliberation and a lot of measuring and triple measuring and checking underneath I finally got a big hole in there oh and that's where it is, right there, which is actually under the bed, which is not where I intended to go. Um, actually, you can have a look up in there. Um, I don't know how much you can see, but I've made sure that the heater will fit. And the, the biggest thing is um, wire lengths and fuel line lengths. Um, and not only just the lengths, if you have a look under here, I wanted to put up the back there and the fuel line wouldn't reach to start with and the doing the electric would be, and then I was looking in here and there's just nowhere to do it. Being such a small van, you know, you're sort of limited to what you can do. So that's where she's going to be living, underneath the bed. I didn't really want to do that, but that's where it is. Um, yeah, we'll go inside now. I've just got to clean the dust up and then I'll, I'll show you um, what I do next. Okay. Okay, guys, so the next thing I've got is a galvanised 100mm um, downpipe um 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 no, what do you call it flange basically we'll call it um and i'm just going to run some of these heat proof um sicker flex around the edge here like this you don't need too much it will squish out the sides and it can get quite messy but that's enough for there that's for the inside i will just pop this here for a second now we'll go over to our hole that we've drilled through here and we will and we've cleaned it all out of dust and everything else so that's all good it's all nice and flat and then we're just gonna pop that in push it down give it a little bit of a, a twist here and there like that and that's that's there now i'm going to go on the outside of the of the van i'm going to seal all around the base of that okay so that's our next step in the process so the next thing guys is I'm going to give this a good seal all the way around. Um, I'm going to use plenty on this side. I'm going to really squeeze it into there. Um, nice big 
but you can cut the um you can cut the nozzle for more to come out but you really don't need you know you don't need to go too much um, and I'll show you a little trick that a lot of people don't realize they get real messy with this stuff I'll make sure I squeeze some in there Should be sealed quite quite well in there because I've gone as close as I could to the chassis roll just give myself room inside right now I'm just gonna make sure that's pulled down and what you do is you should wet your finger with a bit of saliva And usually you won't get it everywhere but in this case I have but that's okay um, I'll just wipe it on this here usually wetting your finger helps it helps you um, you know you don't get it everywhere and it gives you a bit better of an, a finish doesn't look so handyman-ish type of a job so it's all down it's all nice and flat on the inside I can feel it it's all good that's sealed really well no water or anything's going to get up in there and the good thing about these as well as I was just saying it to my wife um, a minute ago is that if you're stuffed up you could actually cap this up You could actually cap it, get a cap and away you go. But that's that, that's that section done. Now it takes about four hours to sort of dry. Um, that's fine, we can move on from there. Um, and we will go and have a look at the actual heater unit now and what we've got to do with the heater unit. Okay, let's go. So guys, we've got the fuel pump, we've got the fuel pump wire. Obviously the, the fuel pump wire has to go on the outside. Um, and this will clip in like that. I won't clip it in there because I don't want to have to try and pull it out for the time being. But what we do have to do is get it through this hole first somehow. Maybe it comes in from the other way. I doubt it. That's too big. It's got to be what. There we go. Just a little bit of manoeuvring. Because that is going to drop down to go to your fuel pump on the outside. Okay, so that's a pretty, pretty important step. And a lot of people put a bit, a little bit of the, the silicon there. You'll notice that they've got a, on this particular model we've got here, it's got a rubber grommet around it. Um, so that, I think that's, that'll be a good, a good enough seal. Besides of which, what I will do is these nuts have to be um, extremely tight. Um, so we get that on. We know that that's, that's ready to get ready to go. And we can screw these down with the um, 10 mil bolts that they've got supplied. And what I did notice is that out of the factory, these can go down further. So it's def definitely the short end of the stud to go in first and the long longer e edge end, end to the external. Um, there's another two of them here, somewhere, and three, there's more than two, there's tons of them, but more than I need, maybe. So what you'll find is this nut will go down and it hits, it is a, is a bit of a, um, like a flange and that nut will come to a stop, okay, but that's okay, um, I just was looking at it just before, but we tighten all this up. And use our 10 mil spanner, and we get that really, really tight, guys. Like, I 
I see them studs aren't all the way in and they're a bit hard to do um, with, with, with your finger. But once it gets to a um, gets to that, that clear flange, it, it does keep going. So you can get that nice and tight, make sure that's loose and not getting cut off from anything. And obviously I've got to do this to all of them. I won't go too tight on this side because the old rule of um, not not you know things not not going flat or warping. So I'll do this side next. A socket would be better. I do have a socket, but I don't think the socket will fit over the length of that nut. What is going to be fun? when this goes in is the screwing this down because I've got a funny feeling that because I've, I'm restricted in room I'm probably going to have to use a, I, I think the screws they supplied are, are kind of long um, probably a bit too long but I'm probably end up going to end up going down into the actual chassis rail I was very limited in space. Um, I think that's the downfall with with the small van. Like you saw underneath, there was so much plumbing in there that, yeah, it was um, just a mission. Absolute mission. All right, they're getting a bit tighter now, so that's good. I'll use the, um, the ring side now. We'll do once this once this is um, nice and tight. We know it's not going anywhere. And that's still loose. It's not cr crimped up on anything. I'm actually going to earth inside the van with the earth wire. It's very short. And I wondered if I could earth to the um, to the chassis, but I've decided I won't, and I'll run it through the shunt. with everything tight is tight and too tight you can start breaking things so my rule is don't over tighten stuff that is as tight as that's going to get right now the next step in this process is I haven't read the instructions, but I'm going to assume that this is the um, is the um, exhaust port away from the fuel line, is what I'm going to assume. So, is that the right size hose clamp? It'll tighten up that far anyways. So, that goes on, and we will put this on. This one I might use a, um, you can use a screwdriver. I might use a screwdriver for that. My fork said. Grass and all sorts of crap in there. I think it's about yeah, that, that size. It's magnetic screwdriver. Oh, I'll get it started first. And then what I will do is make sure. Oh, that's ridiculous! That screwed. Obviously, I don't know if I've got a socket that small, but we'll have a we'll have a look. I don't think so, and I wouldn't get to it anyways. No, I have to persevere with maybe a ring spinner. Very really small. And I hope. Next size up. It's 
funny this this ring spanner set I've got skips so it goes from six mil well, I think that is to eight mil and I'll get betcha that's probably seven mil it bloody well is <laughs> it's always the way <coughs> from six mil to seven mil guys it's just and my ring spanner set doesn't have a seven mil but that's okay we can, we can still use the arm screwdriver I'll use the bigger I think the bigger head might be a bit easier. No, big head doesn't fit. Oh, this is ridiculous. So, this will be next to impossible to get to once it goes down into the flange and under the car. So it's a hell of a lot easier to get these pipes and tubes and everything on now. That's getting stuck there, that's all right. Probably stabbed myself. Good entertainment, good value. That's as tight as I can get that. And that's not going anywhere. All right, that's the air intake. Um, so I'll get that going first, just to make sure she's she's going. The other one's a bit stiff. Yeah, that's good. Actually, I've gone too far with it. Just loosen it up a bit. Maybe it's easier for me to get it on here now and get it on there like that. Yeah, as I was saying, once this goes goes in guys one thing I will check is because it's a hundred mil down pipe is that I'm gonna have the room there otherwise that's gonna have to go on this side here or just to the side even um, or in the, in the middle we'll put it in the middle as long as we can still get our fuel line on we'll be we'll be we'll be sweet so yeah you wouldn't be want to be trying to do this To that, and I've got to spin it. I'm just being gentle with everything. So, get these on. Make sure we need, we'll pull that around to this. Get it away from the fuel line, so I'm, get, I'm not impeding myself from getting the fuel line connected. All right, and that is as tight as I can get that, and that ain't coming off. So that's that's good. Right. So now now it's time for me to grab the fuel line, which I'll put over here, and we. We'll connect the fuel line now the fuel line does have these little um these little clip things which are probably useless but um from what i can gather there's no other connections or anything to go on there just this so we'll feed the fuel line right on it won't go any further Then we will use the little doobalaki here. If you can see this, you just squeeze that together. What I really need is a pair of needle nose. Just make it easy for myself. Now, now needle nose pliers and needle nose multi grips, but either way, it's going to make life a bit easier for me just to go bang, squeeze that in, get it over and on obviously yeah that's not going to go anywhere that's loose down there uh, but that's not going to go anywhere guys that's that's nice and, that's nice and solid so that's that that part of it done rightio um now it's time to go and put it in the caravan because we can slot all this down 
through the hole, including the fuel line. I'm gonna, obviously, we've got to start connecting things up and I've got to screw this down. Um, but we'll go back into the caravan. So what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm just gonna drop the, the fuel line down through the our hole. Okay, just dropping it down. Then the next thing I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm just gonna put a bit of silicon around, uh, just around the rim of this. Um, probably about 20, mil 20 millimeters in. And obviously you don't need much. This, I don't really want to go, oh, it's going to squish in that cable, so I'm going to need to, I'm going to, need to adjust this cable um, to where I put the fuel pump, so. That should be pretty, pretty good there. Like that. That should be fine. And then the next thing I do, guys, is I'll just get this out of the road. Next thing I do is I feed all this down into the hole, which is fun and tight areas. I don't know if you can see that or not. Fuel cable down, everything's going down, everything's going down and in. Oh, I mean, things come up. I should have really let that dry, but it'll be all right. And what we want to do is keep, I'm going to have to re silicon the outside, I think. There, like that. Turn it around and that is all my wiring for later on. Now there's enough gap between here and there that it should be okay. That's the um the um I think that's the um that's power out, so that's that's okay. There's enough gap there for the air to, to come, come in and out. That's in there nicely. I, now I'll screw this down. I'll use the screws that they've got supplied. Um, you don't need to see that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then we'll have a look outside first and we'll plumb everything else up um, and get the exhaust fitted properly um, and run our fuel lines and our fuel pump and we'll do all that next um, we'll leave the actual wiring to last i think is the best way to approach this as long as i've got access to the um to the fuel line cable and i can pull it through and it's not all tied up in a knot which it is which is always the way when you're working with a million wires that I can work with. All right. Okay. All right. So now, I'm, now I'm going to put in the um, the fuel line um, connector. Um, they come with a little um, black grommet, so you make sure that when you put it on, that it's all seated on there properly. Um, now, obviously, you can't just go put it in like that. Um, so there's little tricks that we can use to do it. Um, first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to drill the hole for it, okay, and I'm using a, and what you'll see with the uh, fuel tank is there's this ridge here, um, which is no good, so, and the instructions say it's got to be 40, mil, 40 millimetres up from the bottom, um, just so you don't pick up any, um, sort of gunk and things. So, the first thing I'm going to do is going to use a smaller drill bit, um, just to do a pilot hole right in the middle there, that's a little pilot hole, because... I'll be using an 8mm bit, which is um, a little bit bigger than the diameter of the thread, I think. If not, we will, we will see. So, let's have a look. So, 
So we'll just draw that. We'll just make sure this this fits first. That's a little. It's not quite that big. So all I'll do. That should be enough for that to go in. Okay, so the hole's a little bit bigger. I'll just get my um, Stanley blade and give it a bit of a clean. So that should be good. So to get this on, all I've done is I've got a bit of fishing line. Now some people use um, some people use um, wire, um, but you know I don't have wire that's small enough to go in the diameter of that hole. It's a tiny little hole, so I'm just going to use a bit of fishing line. Hopefully this green plug um, is heavy enough, and I've just tied a little knot, a little granny knot in the end, and I'm going to feed that through. Until it comes out the bottom here like this. Peep this tag in. So it's just a bit of fishing line. That was a lot easier, a lot less time. Undo my granny knot. Pull that off. We know that's got to go through there. Like I said, this is tiny, this hole. Some people use wire. I don't have wire. And all as we do. How easy was that? I will just pull that out now. That's on. There's another little rubber grommet here that I will put on. And there's a nut. I like the nut doing this. So I just put the little grommet on, making sure I hold on to this. I don't want to lose it and have to go through that whole process again. Once you get it on a bit, a little, the other little rubber grommet. At least I know it's not going to fall away. I'm not going to lose it. I'll get the nut ready that goes on it. That's the nut that goes on it. I've got it ready to go. I'm just going to push that grommet down. I can see a little bit of um, a little bit of plastic here, but I'm going to run some silicon around this as well. I'm not just going to rely on the grommets and the nuts. I will run some silicon around it and see how we go. Let's get that. Oh, no, I'm going to get that one further. Seems to be on good. Get this nut on. I'm guessing that looks like it's about 12 mil to me. That's just a guess. We'll find out in a second. Oh. 13 mil. So I know it's not spinning. Probably be a good idea to use. I've got a little pair of needle nose um, vice grips here. Little needle nose vice grips. Which should allow me to tighten this up fairly well without damaging the actual. It 
is sliding a little bit. Just tighten it up a bit. Ice grips, great tool to have. Yeah, that'll do. I'm not going to feel any tighter than that. Feels okay. So that's that on high wheel silicon around that. Once this is installed, make sure there's no crack in here. Now, what I'm going to do, even though I don't know if my Gao tech screws are going to be long enough for what I want to use it for, where I want to mount this. Oh, probably two washers, three washers, yeah, three washers. These washers are to, for the mounting spot. Now, they might work for the time being. Now, these are galvanised. This is just a um, um, to, to get me out of trouble at the moment. I will just um, use my little rattle gun here. I'll put a, a bit in that, and then I'll show you where I'm going to mount it, and I'll explain to you use, um, what I'm going to do afterwards, and that this is only a, a those these screws I'm are using are only a temporary measure. Just remember what I said: these gold things they supply, chuck them out, they'll rust. You just hold that course. Just look, take your weight off for a sec. Hang on. Yeah. screw but as I said this is only um, temporary I'm actually going to get um, some like round headed nuts um, with uh, uh, round head bolts with um, the nylon um, head nuts and I'll put it in properly um, so I can use this jerry can space anyways I'll put the upper three on and then I'll um, hook the hose line the fuel hose up and the fuel filter and I'll show you what I do there after I get this um, rest of this tank squared away Okay, so what we found, guys, trying to get these hose lines onto onto these um, um, nibs or whatever you want to call them, um, it's it's next to impossible. Impossible. We've tried using, I've tried heating it up and making it all soft and pliable. No, no go. Um, what we've found, found better is a bit of inox, a little bit of inox, and that's even though it's tight. Like it's really tight now. I need to wipe my hands because I've got inox over it. It's slippery as. So after fighting with getting the hoses on and getting the hoses on the fuel filter, I finally done. I got the clamps on. I got some of this because um, it's plastic. I got some of this pipe insulation from Bunnings. It's like three dollars for about a meter of it. I'm going to put that over it to stop it from um, from stone chips. I've actually done the same thing with the with the with the fuel filter. Um, what I'm going to do is to keep everything um, neat and tidy and tight. I'll use a couple of these smaller zip ties here. First, I'm going to zip tie it to this um, plumbing fight. I'll snip them off later. Next, I think, if this will fit around here, I'll zip, oh, I've got bigger ones. I'll use some of these bigger zip ties. See, what I might do is to use the really big zip ties and kill two birds with one stone. And hopefully, 
these will reach the whole way around, uh, which they will. There's a brake cable there. So. No, no, they won't, but here's a trick that you can deal with cable ties. Join two together. Um, let me think about it for a second. So that goes on the inside like that. So I can join two cable ties together. in the position where we want it to be so we don't want to have that hose kinked it's all flapping around all flapping around and I want to protect that plastic um, thing and we will again I don't think that is going to go anywhere because the fuel filter is there and that's either side of the fuel filter and they can't go through. I'll just snip them off and that's that done and I'll fill her up and let gravity do its work while we go and do the electrical stuff. All the external work's been done, uh, fuel lines on, fuel filters on, it's um, been protected with plastic fuel filters so I'm protecting it with um, some, insulation, some insulated piping um, from Bunnings. Um, the fuel line just follows the rest of the cords. You can see the um, exhaust system comes out. I have it coming out on the side here with really no bends. Um, the intake system is um, the air intake is there with the air filter on it. I've just connected it there. Like I said, I use galvanized nuts and screws for everything. That way I know they won't rust. Um, if you have a, a bit of a look under here, you can follow the fuel line and the um, the uh, fuel pump cable. Um, it's all so like just following through, and the um, the 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 fuel um, pump um, for it to be the right direction. Basically, the way the plug goes points towards the um, the um, heater. Okay, we'll go inside and have a look at the heater install on the electrical. So the next step is just drawing a 76 millimeter hole through here, which is pretty much in line with what we're doing um, with the air for the air vent. It's adjustable, nice tight fit. Now I've had to cut this to length so it fits. Make sure I pop my rings on. I'll pop them on both the same way so it's easy for me to screw these up. And it's just a matter of popping it on there and popping it on here and and screwing these up. So the heater ended up under the bed there. I've got my wiring running along the back, along the side. They're just held in with cable ties and, and straps. And I actually had to put quite a large hole um, through to the um, battery box area um, because um, the plug and play um, clips are quite large. Um, they're you know, like over 24 millimeters. 
So I'll just put a hole saw through there. I've got the vent coming out here, even though I originally said I wasn't going to do that. Um, I really had no other options due to all the plumbing um, in the van and being such a small van. Now the electrical is really easy guys. It's one of the easiest things you can do. This is the negative wire from the heater goes into a negative shunt and this positive wire basically I found a, a free positive um, foot wire, um, spot foot in the shunt it's actually on a 10 amp plant, um, 10 amp fuse I was hoping that um, I was hoping it wouldn't blow it and it doesn't and I'll show you the amp drawage in a minute I've also put a, a um, isolation switch in now a lot of people say I oh, don't bother if you don't and you don't turn your your battery monitoring off and your isolation switch off the LCD unit which I've got um, placed down here that'll stay lit and draw your battery um, so I'll turn it all on right now and you'll see how it all comes on. And so a benefit too of being able to do that is that you can set the time on these, but I um, have thought, well, it's, it's a, actually a good indicator when I turn it on and get the heater going um, on how long I've been running it for, um, you know, because it starts with zero, zero, zero. Now don't do what I do and over prime it, um, which I did the first time, but to prime it, you press these two buttons here, It'll come up at H off, you click up, and you'll go um, OK, and it'll prime your lines. If you do what I did, um, you end up over priming it, mate, and the amount of smoke I got come out was unbelievable. Now, I'll get it running. Um, all I've got to do is press this, and it'll it'll start, start running. What you'll notice is the glow plug's on. Um, this will slowly creep up and um, once it gets a temperature it will um, you know it, once it gets a temperature um, I, to set the temperature you just go up and down I've got it set on 21 degrees um, so it's starting at the moment um, when it first starts it is quite loud you'll, you'll hear that I cannot hear the fuel pump everyone says that the fuel pumps are, are, are noisy I can't hear it at all. Um, maybe they've changed the, the mounts on it. Um, but what I'll, I'll do is I'll show you the amp drawer on it. I'll just turn the lights off so you, you can get a true indication. So the amp draw, drawer at the moment is eight amps. Okay, so it's well within the 10 amp um, limit of the fuse. It's doing its thing fans going it's just doing its thing and we'll use that as a timer and and see how long it takes when she really does kick off it sounds like a jet um but once everything gets to temperature it's um it's an absolute yeah it's it's so quiet you you don't even you don't even know um so we'll just um i oh, will put look it is a warm day I've got two thermometers um, um, temperature gauges here inside now so I'm going to put this one in front of the um, in front of the um, vent to show you the heat that's getting pumped out um, which we'll be able to to see here I don't know if you can hear that but it's just all kicking over so I'll just leave that there and We'll have a look in the time, is the time, it's at zero, you saw me turn it on, and you can hear it slowly kicking over. It's drawing 7.9 amps now, but once she's all up to temperature and all running, um, it draws about one amp. You know, it's 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 bugger all. So, <coughs> so as, like, as you can see, it's drawing seven amps. That's the beauty of that's the beauty of running your electrical wiring um, through your shunt because that way you know exactly um, you know where you where you stand with your battery um, management and, and your power usage you can hear it starting to rev up now Like this will get the temperature really, really, really fast. And it's also very important 
um, that when you do shut it down, you shut it down that there and you wait for it to do its entire um, shutdown process before you turn your isolation switch off. Otherwise you can end up um, wrecking your, your diesel heater. So you can hear it now. And it's quite loud to begin with. You can see the, the bars coming up here. The bars are coming up. That'll get the full red. There you go, it just went to red. So she's all fired up. Let's have a look and see if there's any temperature difference yet. Not yet. But it will. I'd be very surprised. It's quite quite hot coming out of there. see it's slowly dropping down the glow plugs off it's slowly dropping down once the um, thermostat um, reaches its room temperature which is actually on on the gauge there that fan will um, automatically slows down and it's that's whisper whisper quiet but we'll come back and look at that and we'll look at the time in a, in, in a second quick update it's pumping out 62 degrees um, Celsius um, at that spot there. And it's been running for 12 minutes. And you can hear it's starting to wind down. It's starting to wind down now and it's next to silent. So, and if you can hear the, if you can hear some fuel pump ticking, mate, you've got better ears than me. The fuel pumps, pretty much, right below this bed area here. And it's, and it's still running, and basically the um, the noise is next to nothing. So you can safely have that on all night and obviously it'll probably start to rev up a little bit more again if the, when the temp temperature drops but i think um we'll, that'll have to be a it's we'll test that out one night um but that's it that's the noise that's the finished product and the wiring is super easy guys it's nothing nothing hard about it at all you don't need to be an electrician um now we'll have a look it's only it's it's all up and running. The diesel heater is working. It's it's drawing 0.4 amps. I can run that heater for 166 hours <laughs> with 120 amp hour lithium battery. Um, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Anyways, guys, I hope that was informative. And um, yeah, don't be afraid um, to do your own installs. It's a cheap cheap heater. Um, we had to buy a little bit of extra cable and, and a few bits and pieces, um, but all up probably maximum $300 it cost us to do that. Um, if you've watched the whole video, um, you'll know you'll know that the biggest thing is is making sure that it doesn't interfere with plumbing and, and everything else that all your wiring and all that other stuff. You just that's the only thing you really got to be careful of. Um, I hope it's been informative. If you enjoyed the video, um, leave a like and subscribe and follow us on our, on our, on our next adventure. Okay, guys, thanks. See yous.